Green Day's 14th studio album, Saviors, was just released on January 19th, 2024, through uh, Reprise Records. The album has been getting a lot of positive reviews. It was called the best album since American Idiot, so let's see if there's any truth to it. Uh, the album was recorded in London and Los Angeles. It marks the band's first collaboration with producer Rob Cavallo since 2012. Prior to its release, a leaked demo of uh, One-Eyed Bastard surfaced and the band unveiled uh, The American Dream is Killing Me as the lead single. This album explores social issues with track 1981 being performed live. Cover the album features an edited photo from the 1978 uh, Troubles in Belfast photo. Uh, this photo actually reminds me of uh, that scene from Malcolm in the Middle. Uh, remember when Francis is standing in front of the burning car? So uh, check it out. I did this uh, alternative album cover. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think uh, of my alternative uh, album cover. But anyway, the album has 15 songs. It's about 45 minutes long. All the songs are about like four minutes and under. The opening track and one of the singles, The American Dream is Killing Me, has a really fun and upbeat sound. The lyrics aim for a mix of pop punk, theatrics, and humor, similar to American Idiot. A review in a Us magazine compared to Drumbeat to Longview. I haven't really heard that, but a review of a Wall of Sound compared to Rift to Jesus of Suburbia. This actually makes me think the band is trying to capture the essence of every era of Green Day. Uh, much like uh, Metallica 72 Seasons uh, did back then. Uh, that's just my first impression. Look Ma No Brains uh, was another single, and it's an old-school punk rock song. This one goes back to the insomnia or Nimrod sound. It's straight and to the point. It's only two minutes long. has everything you would expect from a classic Green Day song. Bobby Sox reminds me of a mix between Sugar Ray and Nirvana. They're using that tried-and-true formula of the clean guitar tone in the verse and the distorted guitar tone slash harsher vocals in the chorus. The style is uh, outdated, but the song is catchy. I think it works in the context of the album. The lyrics tell the story of a love song, and the guitar solo reminds me of Weezer. One-Eyed Bastard is one of the singles. The main guitar riff sounds similar to Pink's uh, So What. Uh, you probably heard that already. But it's not unusual for songs to to have a uh, similarity. So on the bright side, the song is quite catchy. On the downside, it has like a certain cheesy factor. The intro to Dilemma might remind you of old like 50s rock and roll, but once the song starts, uh, they really show their classic sound. It's a really fun and catchy punk rock song. It has a style similar to uh, Dookie, uh, that era. I love the distorted palm muta guitars. It's such a nice touch. The song is a catchy and upbeat tune. However, uh, the lyrics take a humorous approach to somebody struggling with addiction. 1981 uh, has been played live and it has a very 2000s pop punk sound. It's another short song, it's very energetic. I guess it's a good song for a live setting. Goodnight Adeline is one of the ballads of the album. This is an upbeat acoustic song with Billy Joe singing in a cleaner style. This one's not too bad, it was pretty catchy. It has a rock and roll vibe. Uh, the guitar solo brought back that sound of those late 80s hair metal ballads. Coma City is a song that appears to be about Elon Musk and the space race. This track stands out because it sounds very different. It has a very energetic garage rock sound with some new wave elements. I thought this one was pretty good. Corvette Summer reminds me of that old movie with Mark Hamill that came out right after Star Wars. I don't know if there's any relation to it, but the album review for a New Noise magazine describes it as a song to play in the car in the summer with the windows down. So I like this one. It's a very upbeat and happy vibe. It's a very... Fun, radio-friendly song. Susie Chapstick is a song with a bright guitar tone and a radio-friendly pop sound. It's very wholesome. It's about young love. It's catchy. It's fun. And the back of vocals were a nice touch. Strange Days Are Here to Stay has a very dookie-like sound. Again, they're bringing back that classic 90s sound. The, the lyrics address generational gaps and problems with drug abuse. So this was one of the better songs. It has a very uh, upbeat sound, it's very fun, and it also had serious lyrics. Living in the 20s is another song with that classic punk rock sound. It's one of a lot of attitude and lyrics that address current events, such as supermarket shootings and wildfires. This one had that insomniac or nimrod sound. The tone is angrier, and the sound is, I would say, quote-unquote, heavier. Father to a Son is Green Day's Cat, Cats in the Cradle. Billy Joel is singing uh, to his two sons. It's a soft, emotional ballad with acoustic guitars. 
kind of song you can just sit and listen to and just enjoy the lyrics. This will probably be the next big ballad, you know, following greats like Wake Me Up When September Ends and Good Riddance Time of Your Life. It's that type of song. The title track, Savior, is track number 14. It's a hard rocker. New Noise Magazine compared it to the sound of The Who. I didn't really hear it that much, but that's what they say. And that same magazine compared the lyrics to The Foo Fighters Rescued from last year, a song about being saved. So that I could, you know, see in the lyrics. Um, I think it's pretty good. It's a mid-paced rocker, and the lyrics are uplifting. Final track, track 15, Fancy Sauce. Uh, it's another ballad. It has a soft acoustic guitar. Billy Joe sings in a softer style. He appears to be singing about being in an asylum. Another song that follows that power ballad formula where they have the clean guitars and the distorted chorus. You know that formula. It's the longest song. Four minutes and two seconds. So that lets you know all these songs are short and to the point. So in conclusion, uh, many people are saying this is the best album since American Idiot. I somewhat agree. It's far better than Father of All, and it's a lot better than those like 2012 trio of albums. But is it better than Revolution Radio or 21st Century Breakdown? I don't know, maybe. Uh, I guess you have to wait for my ranking video next week. Uh, the album definitely captures the essence of uh, various Green Day eras, uh, showcasing a diverse range of styles and influences. Standout tracks are The American Dream is Killing Me, Look My No Brains, and I really like Father to a Son. I think that uh, shows that they have this renewed energy and uh, are really bringing back that songwriting that we know from the band. Uh, so uh, there are some negatives. Um, some songs have these like repetitive choruses, but I wouldn't say anything is skippable. My score is an 8 out of 10. could go up after I spend some more time with it, but that's my score for now. This is actually my first Green Day video on this channel. I'll check out my review of the most recent album by The Offspring. I'll put that right there. This, this channel <laughs> doesn't do a lot of punk rock. I guess that's the closest thing I can come up with. Uh, maybe after I do my ranking video, I'll change it. But for now, watch that. And uh, please like this video. It helps me with the algorithm. Please subscribe if you're not already. Leave a comment. I will see you in the next one.